<laughs> All right, since it's 25 after and we've had some social time and we always start late, um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, this is the uh, uh, October monthly meeting of the Dallas Personal Robotics Group for anyone watching on the web. Um, of whom you those here present might be interested to know we have a surprising number of web viewers, maybe 30 to 40 on average. Um, and uh, they come from all across the country and from other robot clubs and such. Um, so we're, um, today's agenda, we're going to have a show and tell on Robo Columbus robots. Um, next month's meeting will be Robo Columbus itself. Um, held at our treasurer's plate house and we don't make the address public for his privacy but um, send an email to secretary at dprg.org and we'll tell you where where the event is to be held um, for those who want to come and watch uh, the event will actually begin at 12 30 12 45 i think doug um, well, I think something like that something like 12 yeah about yeah. 12 or, or if you're a contestant, you should be there earlier. Yeah, yeah. If you're, <laughs> if you're a contestant, <laughs> um, come early. Um, so let's see. Without food, so what, what we're going to do? We'll just run through as many show and tell on as many robots as we have here, and then we'll um, migrate into uh, some of us want to work on our robots and consult with the other experts here. I know I'm one of them. Um, looking for some advice on various, uh, anyone who's done BNO 055s. Um, and, but anyway, we'll work on stuff and the rest of us can discuss what we want the club to be or eat pizza. Eat pizza. Eat pizza. Yeah. Pizza will be arriving at noon. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. All right, so with that, um, I'd like to pro pro propose starting, uh, starting off the show and tell, mm -hmm. since I'm already up here. Um, and I'm going to share a video. Um, just, I'm going to start off sharing a video just because I think it's really fun. Um, give those of you who haven't actually been here, been to a Robo Columbus, so this is what it's like. This is Mobot. Uh, Mobot placed second um, in last year's contest. Is that, is that sharing out to the, to the meeting? Yeah, it's on the screen too. Okay, good. Perfect. So this is the kind of terrain that the robots... Is it more in the grass too? No. <laughs> I wish. You know, I've only been doing this project for 13 years and it still has a bone in the grass. Is it programmed to attack the enemy robots? <laughs> no. It's programmed to try and find the code. Now, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty heavy, it just runs away. <laughs> so it's seeking to kiss, kiss the cone, that's oh, the objective. Right. Ah. You go around two, two cones. But it missed it. Oh! It's supposed to hit the cone? It's supposed to touch the cone and stop and wait three seconds. Without knocking it over. Without knocking it over or moving it. Um, remember this year we're going to have a tennis ball on. Yes. And so, um, so, it's, so there's two target cones and then another cone back near the start area that, we're, uh, that you're supposed to try and, uh, if you touch all three cones, and stop touching them, you get the maximum points, which is nine. Awesome. And then, you know, there's multiple people with the same amount of points, the faster one wins. <laughs> I'm going to take a short cut across the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not on the path, but I'm pretty sure my robot's going to do that. Water has. Yeah. 
Was that a violation? No. Yeah, it's moving it. <laughs> <laughs> but it might not have knocked a tennis ball off. Hey, hey guys on the phone, please be aware that uh, when you talk, you cut out the video that's being shared, at, that's being recorded. So please be judicious about your use of audio. So anyway, that's that's the contest that'll be happening next month. Um, will it be near Thanksgiving? It's actually the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Yeah, very near. <laughs> very near. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to lift this baby up. Could I possibly get a hand? And just a quick long ways. Yeah. And I'm going to invite you all to um, come up and so I'll just briefly describe it um, and then invite you all to uh, come up and poke around, look inside, etc. Um, so this is a, a, a RTK GPS. Um, I think there's a few people trying to use RTK GPS. It's a two centimeter GPS. Um, I was the only one there last year that was using it. And um, I found it to be extremely sensitive to the electronics. Closer than about two feet, um, and you'd start to lose accuracy, um, and it would have difficulty locking. Um, I am uh, got a, a Oak D light that's hopefully going to use be used to if I can get any software working. Hopefully, be used to uh, find the cone and, and direct the direct the approach, final approach to the cone, um, and. Then my, I guess my, you might say my pride and joy, um, which <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be too proud of it though. Um, so let me just pull this out and then <laughs> you all are welcome to come up and have a look. That's it. So I see that you, you, the duct tape has been uh, replaced with uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's that's what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll fire it up later. Um, I'm, I 3D printed these these bumpers. Um, micro switches are all wired in, and I've checked that the... So there's a uh, Raspberry Pi and an ESP32 um, talking ser over serial to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and the SP32 receives, has a serial, so there's a serial connector, um, serial link that plugs into this robot controller um, and hijacks its brain. Um, I managed to get the, um, or one, one of my buddies managed to get the, the, uh, the, the programming interface, the software interface for the robot. So you can put it into test mode and then drop, you know, give it, send it motion commands. Hmm. Um, and then there's some extra wires coming from encoders that I mounted in, in uh, on the wheels and and um, uh, encoders on the wheels and and then um, wires coming in from the from the switches from the from the bumper switches. I'm actually these are proving surprisingly sturdy. Hmm. Um, I've run it into the wall a few times and. They haven't broken off. Um, inside, I've got a 500 gig uh, SSD hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. And then the, the power wall is this back wall. So there's 24 volts of batteries, five amp hours, and then um, various regulators, um, ideal diode relays, etc., for managing the power. So if anyone wants to come up and have a look before we hoist it down and I hand it over. Mm -hmm. What, what, or, what in, connector is this? What, what connector? connector is this? That's an XT90. Good. Um, For 100 amps? Or? 90 amps. 90 amps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, feel welcome. So I do have a, um, an unused Wi-Fi. Uh, this white thing was meant to be a, a long-range Wi-Fi. Oh, but, but wait, there's more. Oh. 
Um, <laughs> no, 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 you don't need to move it. Okay. That's it. That cell phone that is using, that's right, I need to clear a drawing, uh, a drawing that I, I, I made. The cell phone that's recording this meeting um, is used to, as a Wi-Fi hotspot to, um, to provide Wi-Fi access for mobile out to the internet. And um, because RTK GPS needs corrections to tell it, you know, what, what the error is in the received signal. And um, so it, it gets that from an online correction source. So one of the things the cell phone does is, is um, get corrections for the, for the RTK uh, and receiver. That's the RTK receiver there. But the other thing it does is I've recently put a VPN package on it that makes it available to anywhere else that I may be. So uh, let me just bring up a picture to hopefully make that clear. Um, this is really cool stuff. Uh, is this a final bumper as well? Or you got anything else that goes into that? Sorry? Are those the final bumpers or do you have something else that's gonna go into that? Uh, this this is this is final. Um, so no, that's that's it. This, this is an early model. With the, with the angle of the cone, is it enough to like push it back? Mm. Oh, does it stick out far enough? I wonder. Oh, testing has testing has revealed a flaw in the design. Look at it. Let's see the flaw. Uh -oh. <laughs> so maybe some kind of like maybe disc or something that comes out just like an inch or two. Yeah. yeah. Would be a tennis ball to fall off. Uh, <laughs> Need to extend the bumper. This is a soft cone. The one I have at home is much <laughs> little harder <laughs> and the one you see. You could probably 3D print like a, a, a disc that, or like a part of a disc that comes out, maybe just a little. Oh, if you really want to test that out, you need to put a tennis ball on top of it. Oh, oh yeah, but right. this the test fall off. It's there. thank, thank yeah, you for yeah. that test, Mark. <laughs> I was looking at it by that. I was like, like it's pretty vertical. And like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to use cones that are baked in the sun, I guess, stiffened up, yeah. hardened. <laughs> yeah, there was one. I had some about the tennis ball, and it was that the tennis ball are going to be on top of that. So if the tennis ball comes off, you know you've hit the cone too hard. So. Beware of tennis balls. Much <laughs> knock it off. No, it wouldn't. It was my fault. <laughs> so, yeah. Is the Velcro on? <laughs> Get some blue. Don't tell him to be ahead of time. Put some blue on. <laughs> Is that an official cone? It looks like it's the right size. Yeah, well, I think that's yeah, that's one of the cones <laughs> that will be used, Paul. <laughs> Paul so yes. Does the canvas stand mess with the compass, or since it's aluminum, does it not seem to bother? Um, I would think it wouldn't bother because it's aluminum. It's, it's, it's a fair ways away. Um, where's the compass? On the top there. Okay. And you said, hey, will it? Will that aluminum interfere with it? And I'm thinking, no, nah, because see, it's this plastic or metal. That's <laughs> the antenna up there, not the compass. Where's the compass? The <laughs> pole. Probably down lower. This is uh, oh, that little thing. Uh, I guess I'm going to 
me share this. Um, I'm sorry, I can't bring up the picture, but suffice it to say that um, there are two packages, um, tail scale and zero tier, that are networking packages. Um, Kareem and I are both using one, one, of, the, one of the other, and they let you VPN from your laptop, like my laptop is on the VPN, directly into Mobot, even if they're in, on completely separate networks. So Mobot can be on the cell phone, and then I'll be on my um, uh, laptop in, on my home Wi-Fi. Disconnected network segments, but they, um, but they uh, talk to each other. Um, you can still reach across them. So, I don't know, any questions on this? Comments? If you want to share your slide, you can probably use your phone to show that there. Hmm? Yeah, I saw the slide. It did show um, up briefly on the yeah. slide. Yeah. Okay. I, I was looking for, I couldn't find the drawing that I did uh, of, oh. Oh. of uh, how this tail scale networking stuff works. Um, okay, so, so that was the problem. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. So I can't, I can't, I can't find that. I'm sorry, I've had a brain fart. And, um, so anyway, I'll, I'll give up the floor to whoever wants to show, show their robot. Can you help me lift this? Okay. Good question. Does it run in Bronx? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's running Ross too. Thank, thank you. Am I the only other one that brought a robot today? Uh, uh, that it kind of looks like it. it. <laughs> Is that functional <laughs> robot? <laughs> I'm happy to put mine up if you like. Yeah, okay. please. All right. Oh, the little baby one got to get closer. Yeah. <laughs> little baby one. <laughs> little baby one. All right. So for those that don't know me, my name's Carl, and uh, this is the, uh, maybe it will ever get done at some point, duct tape and bailing wire, BTBW. I've been really constrained on time. So uh, the idea behind this one was literally to unabashedly throw crap together and see if I could get it to work. So, uh, so this is literally called duct tape and bailing wire. I got the uh, RC car chassis from uh, uh, Dave Anderson's son. Uh, and I helped clear out Dave Anderson's garage and put it to use. And I threw on a Arduino Omega and a Hobbywing RC uh, ES speed controller. And then I have a, uh, this is a, uh, a step down or whatever converter um, that lets me power an open and VCAM uh, H7 plus. And then I also added um, a voltage monitor so I can keep an eye on that, on the battery itself. And then this is a PS2 controller from Lynx Motion. Um, and then on the top, I have a NeoPixel ring so I can watch direction and such. And the story goes that uh, I had this kind of thrown together. I was getting started and then I, I ripped out literally half of the rotator cuff muscles and then my dad passed. So the first year of 2021 didn't work very well. Um, but since then I picked away at it a little bit, did a little bit with it in 2022. And uh, it, it, it drove along fine towards the first cone in 2022. And then it said, oh, I see the cone and it backed up and headed back to the first cone. <laughs> It stopped about, it stopped literally five feet from the circle. So I didn't even get a single, oh, no. I didn't even get a single point, not even that. So, uh, so grumble, grumble. So uh, then I, in December of 22, I uh, went and did something. I think it was a serial communication noise problem because all it takes is one bit error. And it says, oh yeah, I'm done. I'm going to turn around. So one bit error and this crappy serial port connection. Um, so in December of 22, I, I made it a little more hard so that it, it would have to be multiple simultaneous bit errors to false trigger like that. So if that was the problem, then then uh, so be it. So it has to have two or three 
uh, detections in a row to trigger. Um, hmm. And so I fired it up for the first time in a year and a half, like last week. Hmm. It works. It actually still powers up. And um, I had actually had the buzzers in December too, so I could tell does it see the target, hmm. and uh, is it is the target in range, and has it uh, decided to turn around. Uh, but between having to read the code to figure out what it actually does <laughs> and looking at my cheat sheet to figure out actually how to turn it on. <laughs> so, so this gets us to my goal for the day, which is to um, see if it actually still works. And, uh, and I, I got my uh, super puffy batteries all charged. Ooh, see, see those. Okay. It's uh, super puffy. Uh, yeah. Danger oh. Will Robinson. Oh, oh, oh not, that's a brand name. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's still yeah, holding a charge, Carl? Buying batteries from the brand name Super Puffy. Yes. <laughs> Super Puffy. I got a couple of those now. <laughs> they don't start off that way. They're not supposed to be that way. <laughs> Is it still taking and holding a charge? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. <laughs> so, um... So, so uh, I don't know what it's doing. I have to figure that out. It doesn't seem to be responding to this. Yeah, it's doing something. And it hasn't <laughs> registered with the, the PS2 controller. Oh, because ah. I turned it off. That might make a difference. Yeah. Ooh. So I can manually control it. And uh, if I if I click the uh, start button. See the motors are on, so it would be bad to have motion. To... <laughs> like this should start the, uh, the the drive speed on concrete. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened in several years. <laughs> and then this is the the power it needs to run on on grass, so it should be faster. Well, that's interesting. No action there. Something created out, and I have no idea what it is. Servo still works. Anyhow, so that's what we're up to. If you look in the, uh, if you look down the bore side of this thing here, if you look at this other way, oh. so you'll see that I have. Uh, does that show on the screen? Yeah. So you can see that I put a bounding box around the cone, and I forget the whole deal. But um, as it gets closer, you see that it actually. Oh, it detects it as a cone, so when it gets close, it uh, when it gets close, it puts that circle on it. Um, right now, without the circle, I think it it knows it's a candidate, but it hasn't really declared it as a cone. So uh, yeah, hold it steady there, Mike. So you see that as I bring it closer, wow, and then the buzzer comes up. So you can either see it on the screen, or you can hear the uh, hmm. when there is no. Uh, yeah, so there's no cone. It says I don't have a cone yet. There's a candidate, and with the buzzer going, I'm going to aim for it. How much of the cone does it need to see before it recognizes it? I don't know. Okay, so that sound was the sound that it's time to back up and turn around. Oh. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Well, so you don't have bumpers to detect physical No bumpers. Contact? No bumpers. No, no, this is okay. Yeah, so what else do I have? Uh, somewhere on here. Right here, I've duct taped a uh, IMU. So the way that it operates is um, that I aim it by sight to the first cone, and I press go, and IMU should help it drive straight, straightly. And then it sees the cone, and then once it gets close enough, then it says, I've detected the cone, and I'm, I'm, I'm there. And normally it's moving fast enough that it'll actually bump it before it puts in time, because it goes by width. So it's a game. So, it's okay. so then uh, when it does that, uh, motors are, I have to diagnose the motors, but when it does this, it should, uh, it should wait for a second or whatever that is, and then back up, turn around 180 from whatever the initial direction was, and then aim back the first cone. Okay. And that's... Uh, Can you hold the cone so that it's... Half hidden under the end of the table, but still in the line. Of yeah, sure. I'm just kind of curious. It's um, the so logic that, that I coded was aspect ratio. Okay. 
So um, it's got to be taller than it is wide. Okay. And um, let's see here. The camera is. Oh, there you go. You got to aim down further. Oh. Huh? Uh, if you want to oh. see the screen, it's not showing the screen. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So then, and then the detection for have I hit it or not is um, is based on the width of the bounding box. So you can see it, it's it's uh it's got a candidate way off in the and it's pretty good, you know, the candidate's way off in the distance. It's good. Um and if it sees the crosshairs, then normally this the uh, servos would steer towards it. Yeah. It's a really simple loop. Mm -hmm. Does the ellipse rotate if you rotate the cone a bit? Okay, let's try that. Um this is not open CV, this is just open MV cam. Yeah, it it loses the ellipse. Through. So it's actual, it's not a color thing. It's a object. Uh, it is color, but it's, um, I have it, I have it pretty, pretty wide on the color. I mean, the, it's pretty tolerant of light variance. Although that was one of the theories as to why it accidentally backed up. Um, so how did camera you... went off. Yeah, lost the video. Paul's, Paul's working on his camera. Oh, okay. So, how does the car handle it if it's approaching the cone and, it, and the car itself goes off camera? Uh, Sorry, I, I don't mean to throw. Yeah, no, no. no you're talking. Just, I'm sorry. I'm just curious. No, no, I'm just rambling. So the questions. You're great. Uh, yeah. So, uh, how does the car handle it if it's approaching the cone and it's off camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are fancy. Yeah. And the thing is that. Um, I mean, I mean, you can see how sloppy the wheels are, right? I mean, right. This, I mean, this is this is not precision steering, <laughs> right? So, although it is proportional, it is proportional of a sort. <laughs> we could just not withstand it. But so what happens is that um, you know it it gives when it has the cone, it has an estimate of is it left is the center more left or more right. And that's where the crosshair is. So in, in theory, I wish I could start it, but it's not. Let's see. I guess more what I was thinking was, could it have turned around because it thought it passed the cone? No, it, it won't turn around. It'll it'll just go straight. It'll go straight. It assumes it assumes that it's that you're aimed well enough that okay. and it and it's and it drives remarkably straight with the IMU. Right. Okay. Um and I knew like it doesn't use gyro, it uses compass settings. So it, it's a BNO 055 that relies on um, okay. Understood. relies on compass. But what I think should be happening right now is that as I move it from side to side, the steering should follow and it doesn't seem to be. So I have to decode my lights. I have uh, I have these status lights on top here. And then normally, oh look at that. When the cone shows, the one light lights up. Isn't that cute? Um, so the lights mean something, but I don't remember what it is. Maybe, maybe your hand in hand is messing it up. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. So anyhow, that's, that's, that's awesome. Okay. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, right, it's, it's just, um, it might average a few samples together, but I think it, I, I think I just rely on momentum to average mostly. So basically, if it sees the cone over here, then for that sample, it would send a command to the servos to steer that way. If it sees the cone over here, then it has one goofy sample here, then another in most samples. So for that super brief instant, it'll start to slew this. But on average, I mean, it's not even much of a filter. It's just it's just dumb luck, 20 hertz, whatever the sample rate is. Yeah. <laughs> Was that a, a one-piece scale chassis? I guess so. Or less than that, even. Yeah. Smaller. Looks smaller. Yeah. 16th. Yeah. And it had just barely enough power to make it up the grass. I had to dial it in. Because, I mean, it's not that complicated. So I have one, I can run it at one of two speeds. Or, and that's, it's loud. It's, it's, uh, it's the same speed, whether it's downhill or uphill. So I have to dial it in. And there's another funny thing about it too that um, oh yeah 
when I first got it, you know, this is cool. The motors work and everything. Okay, I don't have to do that much. And the uh, the axle drive linkage broke. Oh, I don't want to do that much. But this is a paper bailing wire, so I got a paper clip. <laughs> Stuck it through, bent it around, trimmed it off. So the axle is now um, driven by a paper clip retaining the wire. <laughs> so I only, I figure I only get so many runs before this just totally like Blues Brothers vehicle. <laughs> but that's the joy of it, right? That's duct tape and bailing wire. And I, I can't even find, I had, I mean, this is the whole documentation folder. So somewhere in here, I mean, <laughs> Okay, there are the rules. I'm impressed with the documentation. Yeah. I'm impressed with just even if it exists. <laughs> well, I can read it. I mean, there's the somewhere there's the sketch that started it all. Where's that? The sketch is beautiful. Because, um, oh, that's some of the wiring. Yeah, High, highfalutin circuitry. There's the sketch. That's it right there. June 5th of 2021, I decided to take it on. And that's the sum total of the, the vehicle architecture <laughs> and all necessary subsystems carefully identified by a reference designator. Okay. What app did you use to generate that? Because it looks <laughs> like it's got a great, you know, pseudo pen and paper filter. I, I used it. Oh, it, it, it. That font is amazing. I mean, this this pen red and paper app that I use is it's robust too. It hardly ever crashes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, it has the correction mechanism in the um, the tape white facility. The tape white facility works really well, as you can see the correction there. Send so, us a link. Uh, <laughs> there's the mixer. That's how the uh, some of the signals are mixed, I guess, together. Mixed on that. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling now because it's, it's troubleshooting time. There's more of the. What was this? Oh, this is here's the here's the uh, here's the software design document. So this is um, uh, minimum. Um, um, what's it say? Touch, move, avoid, communicate, navigate. So these were all the different concepts for how we were going to implement this as of May of 2021. And then I tore out my shoulder and it went to hell. So, okay, I'm done. Any questions? Anyone want to pay me for the architecture? <laughs> I think he just leaked it to the web. Is it open source? <laughs> it is now. Why pay for it when you can just borrow it? But the originals are, are serialized, so. Okay. Those are collector's items. They will be. <laughs> At least by me. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <laughs> okay, so, um, so a question to the group here. Um, there, there's sort of two things on my mind. Um, one, one is... Uh, so Carl and I both want to do some work on our robots, um, and it sounds like I need to dis distract Carl from his work maybe because <laughs> I've got a BNO 55, and um, I want to try and figure out what kind of what driver to use for it and how to put it into gyro mode um, and uh, on any on an Arduino in an Arduino environment, um, and and the other thing is sort of a broader question um, for the people who come to this meeting is like the club, how's it, what could it do better? How, how, you know, and I'm open to any ideas. Are, are we doing enough for like beginners or more advanced people? And, and, and I'll start out throwing out an idea I've got like in the back of my mind because I think Doug and I both want to go and compete nationally in the in the uh, Robo Magellan, um, and so you know maybe the maybe if we focus on more advanced outdoors, maybe we could have like every couple of months have a you know like, like a no prizes contest just to practice, see how get ready. We got to get good to be nationally to to bring home the Mo Robo Magellan trophy. In fact, maybe the DPIG should 
provide such a trophy or, <laughs> or prizes or something. Um, I, I don't know, I'm, but that, that's sort of like thoughts along the grand how to become um, more, how to do more for those who are pretty far up the, the learning curve, but we can think about doing more for those who are not so far. So, or talks or, you know, I'd love to hear what I, I, you guys yeah, think. I, I have something. Uh, is there a good way to uh, collaborate on training projects like cone detection? Because that would be something that everyone could share. Yeah. Like, how do you get the, the uh, training? What's it called? The, the training set. Yeah, training set. So if we could collaborate on that, and uh, that's sort of a critical component, and everything else is basically individual per robot, basically. Or, or even just sharing um, OpenMVH7 code, you know, uh, you know, for blob detection. I mean, either it, so far blob detections work pretty good for me, but um, yeah, I, I think eventually we we probably do need to move on to, you know. AI models for that because it, it would get rid of the problem of having, you know, um, fixed white balance that you have to have for blob detection and things like that. You don't need that for, um, you know, an AI model. It, it'll, the camera will work, you know, and adjust itself for whatever light environment it's in. So, but yeah, sharing, I think, uh, sharing code in general, I think would, uh, would probably help quite a bit in in all areas i was going to say we'll have to get scott to open the kimona and you know because he's number one in our little group so <laughs> tell him he can't run his the contest again until he shares the you know all of his code ideas and stuff you know so <laughs> well actually pretty open if, if you ask him a question but the problem is you know he's using pretty unique uh processors and other stuff that makes it a little bit hard to chair. That's uh, true. But I understand, Ray, that uh, the sharing idea, I'm open to it. I know I've made all the training images that I've used open. Mm -hmm. They're open, but, you know, they're available to anybody. If you're stuck, you can get them. Yeah. And so, uh, and you could, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have other people add more images to it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, I, I think, you know, uh, to that end, you know, several of, bleh, several of us have the Max Cam, yeah. which, you know, that's fairly easy to share. I mean, you know, the everything from models to, um, you know, different techniques of, you know, manipulating yeah. images and stuff. Ray, I think you got it. You're onto something. I think, but I think what, you, what I would say is, not only do you want to share information, but it would be nice to share our uh, specific, you know, so, say we're going to talk, we're going to concentrate, say, on the max cam. We're going to all, everything we do is going to be max cam, or everything's going to be light or light. Kind of like okay. we did with the uh, um, simulation, the line following simulation. Yeah. Because with all yeah. of us, folks, the same thing at the same time. It was a lot of fun, and it, yeah. it produced some neat stuff no one would have predicted. Well, I, I know that it forced it. I realized by doing that simulation, which was surprising, because I didn't do the complex one. I did the yeah. basic and that one. I learned how to cut five or six seconds off of the run time just by where you put your robot yeah. Yeah. on the line. Yeah. It was just, you know, it was kind of like a couple of, things that I would have never, you know, I, I, I had never thought about it, you know, so, yeah, there was a, so that's a, that is a possibility. Um, yeah, or, you know, even things are coming the H7 code. and they don't last very long, you know, so whatever it has to be, which I'd like to, for it, I would like to see it to be, Code that might even be uh, camera di uh, agnostic, you know? You could use mm -hmm. it on a maxi cam, you could use it on a flight or light, you could use it wherever you wanted to use it. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, 
or or an H7, like you got, isn't that what you got? What do they call that one? I can't remember the number, the initial. Open MVH7. Yeah, yeah, you know, like that's that's been around for a long time, and and you know, uh, it's a good platform. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think I think I've I have two. I don't. Do you have two as well? Of those. Well, I think that the simple answer is before you get too far off is I think what you might need for especially for the beginner is sort of a recommend set of basic items. In other words, have some platform that calls documentation where you know it said, "Hey, let's have for a basic robot for a vision these these components," and then actually spell out the components. Versus just oh a vote regulator or that's too generic in words, but zero in on a type and then sort of have like a series class like Doug had for that one robot by what its name was, which I forget that we had the club robot thing. <laughs> but something like that, a series that uses these base components. Well, that's another idea. You know, and then with we haven't had a club robot right in, uh, since so like 1916. <laughs> you know, we had uh, we had uh, what was the one? The first one. That's the why one I, said, that I don't was, remember the name. Yeah, we did but... for for uh, Meg Magazine. Right. But and, so uh, so if the club if the club just throwing this out as an idea, if the club were to provide kits that that well, people could you, assemble, well, it could even be just a robot. The key is have it so that you know a set or yeah, set parameters. Set parameters, right? And then within those parameters, if you did get a fancier uh, optical vision, whatever, or a compass, you could, you know, branch out from there. But the key is have a base set that you can work from. So we're speaking to a hypothetical, you know, the beginner here. What if we? Uh, so, but let me show by show of hands. Who would get such a, a robot and actually do something with it if, if it were made available? Well, yeah. one, two, one, three. Okay, to cool. it. That's why I said, you know, we could. But the key is have a base set so that, and then from there you could devise the components of a, a span. So, what I could do is um, throw this out, put this out on the mailing list that mm -hmm. we have an idea of. Maybe either picking a standard, ro picking a robot or a robot kit or something along those lines, and and maybe doing a let's build it, let's make it do some, uh, you know, the sort of like first things that you make robots do. Right. Well, um, and see what the interest level would be. Okay. Okay. Well, I was wondering if you have a problem with it. Oh, I was wondering. We're too individual. Hold on, Jack speaking. Jack's got the floor. Okay. I was wondering, should we also maybe make it a Ross entry level robot? That that, that's a high bar. That's that's not a issue. No. Okay. You yeah. have to master Linux and you have to master yeah. Ross and <laughs> C plus plus and <laughs> Python yeah. and that would be the L the plus. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the plus. So I yeah. maybe yeah. say the add to it. Advanced. <laughs> Advanced. Oh, but the thing is that point, I think you, you did have the Ross classes in the last year, and those I thought were well attended, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Mike. I thought did a great demo project, even though you sort of ran it down more than I thought it deserved. Um, yeah. But uh, but I've got that little Raspberry Pi Zero sitting on my workbench, and it's I can like SSH into it from here mm -hmm. using that tail scale network. So yeah, I I think it deserves more credit than you really gave it. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we could just have two levels. So you got your entry level one, yeah, which yeah. Is really simple, and then your cross yeah. entry level. Yeah. I think you want to, because of the individuality of the cl of the club, I, I I think that you might have more luck standardizing on subsystems than thoughts. <clears throat> Otherwise, you know, Ray's always had well, always been come. a self builder. You know, I've always made my own platforms, and that's a big joy to me. Right. I don't really want to make but a kit robot. But the, the key point I would say within that 
is that you have components. So that the key is to concentrate on the components, not necessarily the whole the whole robot eventually gets to be a whole robot, but how do you interface your uh, visual, for example, to the I think you're saying subsystem though, John. Right. No, otherwise, I, I, like I say, I think that makes more sense. Like if right. you could come up with, like John's suggesting, uh, uh, well, let's just start off with a blob detector, okay? Right. Blob, a blob detector solution, okay? And this is, you know, there's right now there's the the OpenMV H7 solution, and there's also the PixieCam solution, which, which Scott uses. And I've used, and there's probably a, another, another, probably the max, the max cam can do blob detection, can it? Yeah, so, it can. Yeah, so yeah, it's, so and it's cheaper than detection. all of them. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm trying to say is, you know, you have, you can say, okay, the subsystem here is to make a blob detector. This is example code for an H7. Here's a black sample code for uh, a maxi cam, and here's this example code for for uh, a pixie cam. Now that all could be done now. I think everybody's, you know, yeah, everybody could do that right now. We could we could publish that pretty quick without too much trouble. Uh, and then the stuff yeah, that would images, be you know, integrate that into yeah. the robot. That's why I meant by the integration part. Now, once you go to AI models, it gets a little more complicated. The MaxiCam, uh, what's the name of their site that they do their stuff on? Uh, Max Hub. Oh, yeah. They, okay. So on MaxiCam, there's Max Hub, you know, uh, for LiDAR light. I would suggest probably RoboFlow, okay, because that's a Movidius based, you know, thing. And so, I mean, there's, and I, I don't know who else is pursuing any other uh, vision thing besides those two right now. There probably is somebody. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. So, so the interesting idea, so we started off with an idea of sharing, um, maybe sharing ca camera code, um, and then we, we touched on the idea sense. of a beginner basic robot, but we're sort of suggesting maybe not do a whole robot, but rather focus on subsystems and maybe do sub, a subsystem at a time that we and offer that as sub, a component that you could put on and your... And that subsystem then could be integrated into a robot, yeah, but it yeah. doesn't have to be a fancy, yeah, yeah. you know, the fancy way, real yeah. RC car type right. robot, right. <laughs> if you want to call it that. Yeah. It's an interesting, like, like, interesting ideas, and um, they suggest <laughs> the need for architecture here. Um, where you like have a vision of what the whole thing will end up being like, and then you do a subsystem right. at a time. Sort of like Carl's but, uh, paper that he was showing us. His, uh, high quality, that high quality sketch <laughs> of yeah. the architecture, and then you break it down to its components and go from there. Yeah, like my uh, time of flight uh, sensor array. Yeah, that's a, that's a real good yeah. example. Yeah. That was that was a really cool thing. Yeah. And and the math sense A one O or whatever it is, that's another good one. That, oh yeah, yeah. That's another really nice sensor. Did, does the club have a uh, GitHub that we can yeah. use for sharing? We do. Okay. Okay. Need need to distribute the information how to mm -hmm. I think the website is okay. where the where it is, but okay, it's pretty. I think it's just github.com slash dprg. Right. And we all have the who who maintains it, or does there? There's or is it just restricted with rights, is, uh, okay. but there's not there's not the whole lot of activity to it. Right, right. But we're talking about sharing stuff, so that, yeah, that, that could increase the activity. Place, yeah. I mean, we could we yeah. could get into pull requests. We could do all kinds of things if we want. The key is probably to get a lot of child there. So, yeah. 
We just have to agree to do it. So, I mean, yeah. it starts with somebody yeah. saying, I'd like to share this on that place. So, so a, uh, a, a, a tutorial or something on one of our meetings that says, here's this GitHub site, here's how to use it, stuff like that. Yeah, I think another thing that you run into is all of this is effort that sucks, that sucks bandwidth. So, uh, lots know, of people are retired now, if you're going to, or will be if soon. You're doing, <laughs> doing this documentation and the sharing, you're probably also not building robots. Because, because you only yeah. got so much bandwidth. Right. Yeah. And, uh, That's been my issue for the last few years. Yeah. But on GitHub, you could have a project, right. your project on there. Yeah. <laughs> if you're documenting it. Yeah. Uh, so this is my project, and then maybe you can pull pieces out of that and put it in a common one. Right. Something. In other words, fell true. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Can yeah. I sort of thinking. sanity check? Uh, it's like, it's like uh, what if we're already doing all of this? And it's just a matter of the fact that we are, like, because the total uh, club activity has been improving. I've seen it come and go over the years. It's been... It's been mounting up. We sort of have this idea that maybe this uh, particular Robo Columbus might have uh, as many entries as ever, if not more. Uh, and so things look like they're on a positive trajectory already. Uh, and we're just using a variety of different tools, including the RBNV and the, uh, uh, the mailing list and Discord and stuff like that to share what we want to share. And that sort of allows us to lead from our own seats those things and share those things that we're interested in. Everything's already distributed available equally. Like if we all have our own projects on GitHub and <clears throat> and elsewhere and sharing documents, however we care to share them and manage them, we're offering those up in the Discord. People can look at them if they want to. Questions and uh, you know asynchronous discussions are being had when they need to be had. Um, and uh, and we're each leading, you know, individual projects that we're particularly interested. And as long as we're sharing it, uh, we're sort of doing just in a very organic fashion what I think Paul uh, is is surfacing. And we're voting with our feet to you know the the things that we, you know, like Doug was saying, the things that we sort of spend want to spend our time on. Um, we just develop them, um, share them as there's progress, uh, and people can be as open about it as they want. So I think it's actually kind of happening. It's just not in a coordinated fashion. And I would sort of challenge the, uh, if, if there's one thing that we've not done super well over the years is, um, is, is uh, coordinate, in, like, in a very driven fashion on a particular subject. Uh, we're more like the headless chicken, you know, collection, you know, herd or herding cats kind of a uh, kind of deal. Um, so uh, so I, I would say that we're kind of just sort of got there already. Um, and, and it's more a matter of like, uh, if there are particular projects that somebody wants to suggest and be the champion for, Feel free to open up and share it uh, and figure out because there, there's also not going to be one modality where um, you know some projects have to be tuned more to in person. Some projects can get by online but asynchronous, and some you just have to coordinate on and synchronize in time and you know do do online meetings for. So it, it may vary based on the the subject matter in hand and the the people who are happen to be involved. In terms of Discord, that would be a good presentation also. It's like, I think Discord has matured a little bit since we started it. And if someone could just discuss the organization of it and how to actually use it in an organized manner so that someone else can find stuff. <laughs> like, I, know what you, I know what you're saying. I've, yeah. I've seen things where I, you know, because I look at the new stuff coming in, and I know it's out there on the Discord somewhere, but I can't remember which topic it was. Or yeah, but where. Discord is not intended to be yeah. a an archival library kind no, of mechanism. It's intended to be a chat. I think that would be the mm -hmm. wrong There's use of the tool. Field that you search for a word. There is yeah. a search function. Oh, okay. 
well, that's probably that's probably the right way. It just you know, we just don't. Do Actually, it. the the way Discord came has come about is because of uh, I, you know uh, people want to apply structure to it, and 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 you can attempt to do that, but you're going against the grain of the Discord. The thing is, make the channel the uh, the thing that you're kind of interested in. Everybody kind of flocks to it, and it just things get all shoved in different places. And that's kind of its purpose, sort of thing. And if we want to do all the structure, I applaud the wanting to do the structure. I, I truly do, but that's that's not in Discord's nature. Yeah, it's, it's just not in its nature. So maybe a presentation of, hey, this is this is what we think is a good way to use Discord <laughs> or Discord chat. Wow. Yeah, use that uh, intent that was something yeah. else. Yeah, you, you use it however you want. There's no, there's no policy, but this seems to be a good way to do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and. So that, to your point, Mike, um, something that you, you've hit, touched on something I often think about is DPIG has quite a number of communication channels uh, besides Discord, email, the email list, um, uh, the video list, and comment, uh, the DPIG clips um, channel where we keep our videos in combination with Robot virtu Builders Night Virtual. Um, that has Tuesday night se sessions every week. Um, and then there's one other, um, the, the, this, this monthly meeting. We, but there's nowhere that we tie it all together and say, you know, these are, these are the channels. This is what you should do with them um, or what, it's, what they're ideally best for. And, and so your point about suggesting how to use Discord is could fit into that kind of a framework of, of enumerating, making maybe making more public, more um, actually just writing it down. Writing to, it down. to Graham's point, I think we've evolved it. We've emer it's emerged, right? It's emergent behavior, and we have these different things and yeah. the ebb and flow. So we go back to the yeah. problem of. Yeah, you're a beginner who doesn't know all these yeah. flows. So right, a, right. So we need a way in for the beginner. Right. So it, uh, it, it, like a volunteer to sit down and just document. In other words, have a good, <laughs> ar have a good <laughs> architectural <laughs> design. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just a simple outline. I'm, right. I'm willing to take that on. Yeah. I, I start with listing them, yeah. and then uh, a sentence or two about each. Yeah. Right. And then a sensor too for And then we one. could throw that onto a yeah. page that we have to play yeah. or slash have on the on the ribbon you can click on. I, I, think, that I think it could go to the GitHub repo because if you did, repo, if you, if, right. you, if you made that as a document in the GitHub repo, now it's almost like a wiki, right? And it's in right. a central place. Yeah. We can make proposals and change proposals. Yeah, that's to why it. I was saying it's with a park his, down so it can be easily his idea about you know, a certain tool was used. Yeah. You could use that tool with in addition to the other tool, and that's why I you know, have a page. So that's an interesting tool, idea. Our red page on the yeah. first page was that hey, these are the paths yeah. you can go to get. Information. That's I another thing. And if you yeah. and if you put information of value there like that, and when people ask questions, say go see this. Now you start to drive people there, and this starts to become something that people lean on. Yeah. 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 So yeah. this is a how to DPRG project. Mm -hmm. What would you say, Kareem? This is a how to DPRG project. Yeah. 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 And yes. If it's on GitHub, then you collaborate on that. Get, right. get started with yeah. get started. Yeah. Because like get started. This is this is the DPIG repo and it's and it's and, got a ton of stuff. So that goes back to the ideal of which I was bringing up, which is for the beginner, there's lots of information, but the key is that you're so overwhelmed that you don't know what to work with yeah. or how. Yeah. So like with the, this open uh, the visual thing, there's three it sounds like there are three ways that you can do it. You can also venture that the website does this already, um, not in a directed fashion, page. but the home page needs to improve a little with the fact that we have these sources. So it Green, doesn't really drag you there. Is the point? Where on the website do you think that is, Green? Where would we? See it? It's the whole website. Well, that's what websites are these days, right? You go exploring and you find out 
oh, this is how they do meetings, and uh, these are the news links that tie us to the most recent activity and uh, and stuff like that. And they all end up leading you into, you know, these things. So the 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 the, the problem with the GitHub, um, and you know, I'm I'm using it every every day, or you know, that not that particular repo, but um, but uh, the 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 problem is is not the first place people go. Right. right. The first place, if they've heard about DPRG, they're going to do a web search and they're going to find the website. Okay. Right. So improve the website and then put a put the big website. bold in there an article about how to DPRG, um, and uh, and then uh, and then uh, you know and 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 I assume you know I'm not even looking at it right now, but is there a resources page? Um, because you know that could be another. Thing so, um, but yeah, it's 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 uh, we got we got to if if this is a resource that we want to throw at people who are just starting out, then we've got to do it in the most public way fat, uh, possible, and that it's not going to occur to them to just even even if it even if the content is hosted on the GitHub, um, it is not the first place they're going to look for it. Right. Yeah, so that's why I was saying basically what we need is a page, preferably on the home page, that literally would break down robot and then its subcomponents that could then say, here are the resources, these are parts, these are the people you talk with, blah, blah, blah. So that's why I meant by components. So you, wouldn't, parts. you wouldn't get anything done. Well, but the, the reason why I'm saying is that that's so much bandwidth. Yeah, but and right we now, end up, this is volunteer, guys. Right. And, and, and it's it's gonna gonna clear. Up, <laughs> you know, there's not going to be anybody who can maintain that. Well, I didn't say maintain uh, I'm just saying I'm just have saying a, a path to get to it. Like a link to the GitHub like, page. Like the GitHub page. Yeah. Well, because there are links to your GitHub. On the but where do you yeah. click to find that? Project so where it says yeah. it's GitHub. GitHub. So, right. Link. But I'm saying we have on the home page a spot that defines that, you know, some article, something. Yeah, so there's, there's already links on the homepage for activities, activities archive, email list and discord, DPRG clicks. Okay. So it's like if, if we wanted to promote the GitHub, then we just need the fifth bullet there at the same level. I okay. think if you look at it, I, I, just go I don't see a bullet tag. I, I just see it through a sub menu. I have to search somewhere else for the GitHub. It, it is there. Some, it might be on the sub menu. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Tutorials. Yeah. But, but to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what well, this brings to me. Yeah. Right. That's it. Right. That's the brain just, part. It's, it's easy if, if someone else is the volunteer. And that's the road. Like one click away from the home page. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Everything's one click away from the home page. The links to all the other. picture of the people. Yeah. I see the top thing that says meetings. Our news, yeah. and that's where I clip. I don't go beyond that too much. <laughs> so hence, that's why I say we yeah, highlight yes. a little bit. Can, can you bring up the home page? Can you bring up the home page? Well, a little more bigger menu bar, but you know something that highlights a little bit more because, yeah, you know the, the key well, is the when you're tutorials, okay? right? Uh, but they're very basic and they're pretty old, and. You gotta have to look. And why is that the case? It's the case nobody has donated additional, you know, tutorials to, publish. And to, right. be, to be public. If I look right there, and that's that's what I'm saying. Is you okay? See what you're going to click on mostly is news. Well, that's okay. What most I know. Do. I'm just saying. Well, why? maybe not because. News suggests maybe there's robot news behind there. Right. So what I'm saying is at this stage, I would put one that's more of a uh, build a robot info you know, or something that so do we, collects do news parts together. We just pulling, pulling up a level. Um, I think we'll have to be done. You know, if, if you go Go over. Well, that's the most uh, important thing. Out of balloons, we're trying to reach you. Where does it say something like tutorials? I can't remember what they say. There's somewhere. I think it's the third or fourth one. Project tutorials. Yeah, project tutorials. Is that there it? it is. Okay. Yeah. So there's projects. There's tutorials. You know, there's things. Now there's things there. The problem is, you know, 
they're they're out of they're old, you know, they're or they're very basic. You know, they're like, how does an H bridge work? You know, uh, how does a motor controller control motor, you know, things like that. Uh, the reason is yeah. because nobody's contributed additional information to go there. And the web, if you really think about it, if you were looking for something on on robots, okay, let's, uh, let's see. Okay, let's just say you want to do blob detectors. You would go, you would put in your Google blob detectors, and it would take you to a whole bunch yeah. of places that are done. Yeah. You're not going to come to the website to do that. Right. And that's not that's not the purpose of the website, you know. If you if you had a a routine blog, you know, you could <laughs> possibly build that content, but we don't have a blog, okay? Because we don't have anybody to write a blog. So, what do you, what in your mind is, is the purpose of the of the website? The website is to introduce people to the club. All right. Oh, there's a here's a robot club. And see what do they do here? Okay. Where do they meet? What you know, what is what's typical activities? They're all there. That's what is there. Now, if they're interested in it beyond that point, you know, they'll contact one of us to get involved. But it has more it has more more than just introducing new people to it because it's it's the place where we let current members look at recent videos of meetings and so on. Right. Right? So it's, that's it's all, much broader than that. Yeah, but and it also is there's a there's something that's a little harder to to, to mention. It, it also captures the club's history. It's an important aspect that the club doesn't lose its roots in its history. Okay. I'll agree with that. And this project section is uh is that archive right historical section yeah, yeah. good um, um, i'll say it <laughs> sorry so, so i kind of dropped in because i'm interested in the uh, robo columbus challenge okay and ironically sent an email that hasn't been answered which is an old different story but sitting in the back of the room as an outsider i will tell you that i've been to the dprg website eight times in the last three years Seven of them, I decided the whole thing was defunct. The content, to the gentleman's point, is so out of date that as an outsider navigating it, this was something that happened a decade ago. It's great, and it's wonderful to have the history, and there's lots of great content. And I actually disagree with the comment about the H-Bridge, because if you don't know what an H-Bridge is, Google doesn't tell you what to look for. I know I need to drive a motor. How do I do that? The H-Bridge tutorial is a great introduction. And if I did land here somehow, and saw that it was current because that is the nature of the web. The web is all about the currency of information. So if, even if we did something as simple, and sorry, I'm kind of including myself, even if all we did was every time we have a meeting, there was an update on the website, had a meeting on Saturday, saw a great demo of the robot, and it could be a paragraph. That content would keep this website current. It would show up in search results, and people like me would go, oh, DPRG is actually a thing. Because the only reason I'm here today is Mark happened to mention that he was building a robot. It's like, that's still happening? Okay. I would argue that our news, you know, like you said, all our, uh, I mean, you go down, there's the newest, it's not defined because it's meeting every week. That changes. You know, you can see right there on the front page that we have two activities, this one, and the one on Tuesday listed. If you go up to the news, you can see that we've been meeting every week. So well, it does not in the news. So this uh, get the latest news, meeting announcements, and subscribe. But you got drilled up. But thank you for your comment. And um, you, I, 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 I'd like to understand who you sent email to and okay. why you didn't get a reply. Because um, Robo Columbus is next month, and yep. love to tell you more about it. Well, um, well, I think just so thank you for your input. Yeah. One, one, one that's, uh, so Doug, I mean, I think I, I would agree with you that the information is kind of there, but I think we need to we need to listen to the idea that however it's there and the way that it's there is not necessarily grabbing people the way we want it to. 
and that's my main point was have a more upfront so it's just so page, maybe, maybe it's a visual something. maybe it's just a yeah. visual layout thing I, I don't know but if you if you look at this website one third of it almost is a spinning banner that doesn't give you anything new at the top quarter is um sort of like label stuff the bottom third to a half is what's coming up and there's nothing to that general oh what's your name sir adam um adam's point there's nothing that changes that says last week at robo at rb and v we discussed blah 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 and, 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 and that's something that i i would love to have us do more of is um a summary of what happened at the meeting or an Airbnb. Oh, pizza's here. Is that pizza? No. no, no, no. I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> I guess I changed my event, but I'll be But I think before before we just talk about marching to change this stuff, I was gonna propose or suggest what well, well, through someone else, right? But so Paul, that thing that you did that helped get the whole Discord set up. Um, and that other stuff earlier this year, that process you went through, I think that process was phenomenal. It drug people in and it shows spectacular results with the Discord. And I would suggest that if you wanted to run, if you could, or somebody could run that same process again on the way that the website is structured. With, and if we talk about it with these different goals, the goal of attracting and drawing new people in, and the goal of providing a good representation of what's happened in the past, but also the showing that it's current and active, and why don't you join us? What are you waiting for? I think if I think if you follow that same process again, it sounds like there's lots of ideas and opinions, and I'll bet that that could produce like a kind of idea then that, that could be realistic for Doug to do, as opposed to having, or somebody to implement in WordPress, as opposed to having to figure out what it is and then do it in yeah. WordPress. You know, and then get people great about it. <laughs> Paul has mentioned that he doesn't like the banner, but that was a style when this was put together. Yeah. And if you look at it, it, it does try to lead you into interest about the club. Right. And uh, it has several things that it shows. Yeah. Now, if you've seen it 50 times, yeah, it probably doesn't have the same impact. Right. But you got to think of it in terms of somebody who just popped this thing up. You know, yeah, now. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, I like the idea, and I tried to do it for a while. Uh, basically, going through you, what you need is what's in Robot Builders 9 out. Right. To be summarized. But that is a major task. Well, and I've tried it a couple of times yeah, myself. Here. And, uh, you know, you can do it for several weeks, and then you, you skip one week. And, that's just but to bring up his ideal, which right now I'm looking at, and I tend to see yeah, your thought, which was, yeah, I see that top part over and over is not really added to me. If you move the middle part there, the uh, RPB Builders Night to the top and put that more down below, that alone uh, could improve it. Right? I, mean, I would get rid of it. I'm just saying. It shouldn't be. <laughs> if it's not on the front, if it's not on the on this page that you're seeing right now, right? But nobody's going to look at it. But what I'm saying, if you slide I down, flip you it. can see there's more on the home page. Right. But what I would but do is nobody's going to look below the banner. Right. That's if, all. Maybe flip the top, that top part <laughs> down, and put that part so there. So right, rather up. than specific improvements, I really like Carl's suggestion. Oh, yeah. Of, Getting a group, and Doug, would you be open I'm, to I'm participate? I mean, you know, I've been doing this now since 2010. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to be done with it? Well, so I, mean, I, I could be. You know, so, uh, so, I would be. So that's a WordPress site now, right? It's, a, word, it's a WordPress dot com now. Or dot, not com, whatever dot org. I think. WordPress dot org site. The thing is, it, it, it can and be a lot One thing that needs to be cleaned up is all the sponsors. You know, we've, yeah, we've given them a free ride for years. Yeah, I agree. And it's I agree. time to, you know, just 
cut them loose. But then you got to say, no, well, if I cut them loose, do I go out and actually solicit new sponsors right. or volunteers? Well, that's what you should do. Well, you know, but to, but let, let me just go back to something that you said. You said you, you've been doing it since for forty years. Um, it's a huge and, service. And it's great. Doing sterling work, and, and you know, I think we all owe you a great debt of gratitude. But um, do you do? You, is it something that you could share in some way and get some more help with? I could share, but uh, you know, you got to be careful. Too many, sure. You know, too many shows. Too many people. Too many uh, can be a problem. Uh, yes. But I'd much rather. You know, pass it on to somebody who just wants to, who's, you know, like really glutton for punishment <laughs> and really wants pain, you know, you know, because it's a daily update, I mean, a weekly update that you have to do. Yeah. And if you want to expand it, it's more. You yeah. know, it takes me now. I do say the one thing that I do with this, I use this for justification for a contribution that the club uses through Texas Instruments. So I don't think I should totally get out of it because I mean, I'll, that's how I, you know, I say, hey, I spend an hour a week on this stuff and that's how I get my donation. The eye to the club, which yeah. is a, it's a, it's a non-trivial part of the yeah. inflow each year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It keeps us at least neutral between you and Steve. Yeah, yeah. So, so back to the as I said, the main thing is I think yes, we need to have an architectural sort of layout, which is what Carlos brought up. I bet that we get those together. That's sort of the flow chart. Here's what I, I call it flow yeah, chart. I'm, I'm going more into program. You get versus, together with people who but, want to redesign. The website. Well, just okay. bring, bring, bring and for right now. Together. John, please. Yeah. Doug speaking. Okay. Yeah, just get together and have them, uh, you know, make a proposal for a uh, theme and, uh, you know, kind of layout. That's fine. I don't think you have to go into the back pages. I think just, just, just the front page. You know, you might want to do some menu tweaks, but I don't think you need to do a whole lot. Uh, but if you want to update the front page, uh, and you got to be kind of careful when you do a WordPress theme. If you change the theme, there's a possibility of a lot of things breaking. Because themes don't, aren't necessarily, the problem is themes have all been customized to some degree. Okay. And you know, WordPress ex went after this by creating their own customizations. All right. But before they did that, there were a lot of systems that customized it. I, this uses Vantage, and I can't remember exactly what, what customizations are behind it, but you might be stuck with doing it with them or breaking a bunch of crap and trying to figure it out. So, so I think that's one of the constraints for the yeah, the group to talk to be through. careful. Yeah, yeah, and I, I see you as being a key part of this of such a discussion. Yeah. Is, are you willing to be a, a, a part of such a discussion? Yeah, I don't mind being part. You know, like I said, uh, uh, my my intent on this is, uh, you know, I'm in the club to to really build robots. That's what I want to do. I not yeah. necessarily Me want too. to run the website. When I was when I picked this up, it was because essentially Steve had pretty much abandoned us and yeah. we needed to do something. Yeah. And uh, we did lose some stuff when that happened. You know, I tried to keep as much history as I could, uh, but some of it I'm sure is gone. And uh, so, uh, but. Okay, you know, well, well, you know, we probably, probably, yeah. We need to look for something called Gift Camp. You see, we could get some help. A lot of help for nothing. 
Uh, it's, it's work, so it's not nothing but zero cost. There's a thing out there called Give Camp. I, it's been a while since I've been involved in it. G I V E Camp. G I V E Camp. C A M P. Uh, what they do is for nonprofits, they have a contest. They pick, I don't know, 10 or 12 different nonprofit people. And literally, well, it started off being designing them applications or web spaces and things they needed 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that. Longer than that, maybe. But what it's turned into, and what kind of got out of it, it turned into WordPress Fest. Basically, everything they did was involved around WordPress. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, I'm like, okay, that's fun. I will help, but I just got uh, out of it. Right? So uh, they have a, it's an annual thing. They usually have a weekend, and they usually have tiger teams of eight, six, six eight, ten people, a team sometimes, that will give you a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday of their time to do whatever you want them to do. Uh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. DallasGiftCamp.com. Yeah. Oh, that work. And if, you want to, if, if they're still there, you need to. It's no guarantee, mm -hmm. uh, but because you have to apply, there's an application process. You have to get selected, all that kind of good stuff. So that could go a long way if we get an idea of what we want, and then and have yeah. them just whack in a weekend, and then we maintain the thing. Uh, no, that's the that idea. That allows them peril to. Are they aimed at people who don't have a website? You know, like I've got, I create both everything. Uh, sometimes there's, there's people that, there's people there every year. Sometimes these 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 people come back every year and they advance their website okay. every year and they've been coming back for years. Okay. Yeah, the, interesting. The last one was 2019 and then and it says 2020 in Dallas was postponed to COVID. Oh, so I don't know if they pick back up. It could be there's no this, more listed since then. It could be a it could be a non-issue now and a non-starter. But mm -hmm. I know it did exist at one time. Mm -hmm. One of their one of their sponsors is Big D, Big Design, and that's a pretty good organization. That's a pretty big organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, I think the key take from all this is that ideally we want to look at the red page. How does it reflect people who went to start off that didn't know? Maybe try to get it so that it's a little more less current. Yeah, but I don't think this and, is ever going to be. Definitely. And the part of the way to do that is, I say agree that having that scroll down the top takes a lot of space. I personally would move that down and move that part that I see on the bottom right now on the screen. We we'll move that up. That say so that would think change. Well, that, that's easy to do. But right, and that would then gear people go to this page to see right oh they have a meeting oh they have it that's free let's attend right now they don't see that what they see is that they at the top they see it repeatedly there it doesn't change that's why i said i would do that after that then i would have a click that basically says oh i want to build a robot i was have a root and then have sub roots going underneath because right now we have all these resources, but the key is there's not one click, one spot click to get to the list. So that's where he, people, yeah, they're so used to, oh, I just do one click versus having to click, 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 click to get somewhere. Can I make a motion? Yeah. I'd love to make a motion to move on because I think I this is uh, we're being this sort of, I was yeah. trying to summarize. This is all subject for a deeper dive meeting. Right. I yeah. was trying to basically summarize what I was seeing was highlights that we need to concentrate uh -huh. for future. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. let's take it to a an, an, uh, future work group session thing. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, so I'll think about that, see if I can think of something to try and move this yes. forwards. I think we're, Pizza's only 10 minutes Maybe. away. Yep. Um, well, anything break. else anyone wants to talk about or explain or share or? I could do a quick show and tell if you want. Quick side question. So um, regarding the um, website over models, is that going to be within one of the EPRG monthly meetings like this one, or is it going to be like an outside project outside of this one? Um, the, 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 so any such redesign? Um, 
So uh, I, the way we did um, the, the Discord project was we advertised and asked for sponsors on the email list. And then um, we got, uh, not sponsors, but participants. We got a group that came in on the Robot Builders Night virtual meeting that happens every Tuesday. Um, and then we got a group of people who were interested and then we worked through what we thought was needed. We looked at alternatives. So it was really broadly under the, under the topic of communications channels. Um, so I'd suggest doing something along those lines. Not, it's not something you can do in a, in a meeting, no. in, in a it's monthly a side, meeting like this. It's a this. focused side group. Yeah, it was a focused side group. And I, I, I would do that approach again, having first gotten buy-in and input uh, and found the people who are most interested. Um, does that answer your question? I guess so. So it's going to be like doing this kind of thing with this one, or is it? Um... Oh, where would, uh, where would you, I guess he's asking, where would you solicit participants? I where, think that's the question. point. That's basically that's why I hear. Yeah, where, where you, probably it would be either the mailing list or the, the, well, we've got the mailing list, the Discord, yeah, and um, and RBMV, um, the the meeting. I mean, those are the forums that we have for feedback. Are you interested? Um, I mean, I'd love to like help wherever I can. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, just cool. mention it first name. There you go, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your first name again. Uh, Hi. Oh, Hi. That's okay. Kyle Wilson. That's right. Thank you. Yes. I mean, because I think what will happen is that you put your name in. We know Doug's name is in. I could probably jump on, but not consistently. Um, John has opinions. Everyone, a lot of, so it's a question of who do you get the names, and then how do people want to meet, right? Do they want to meet on yeah. virtual or Discord or wherever? It'll, it'll evolve. And then I would guess if, just like the other one, Tuesday night meetings, <laughs> if there's just a brief update like you gave before, Paul, he said, well, this last week the group met. And those in, the, those in the meeting said, oh, that's cool. It's moving along. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, the group did an actual meeting during um, the Robot Builders Night on Tuesday before that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so let, let's touch base before you leave today and um, make sure you're plugged into the email list and the other channels that we've just been talking about. And make sure, and, and I want to make sure I've got your, uh, an email address. Um, and let me ask you guys what you think about, about this, because I'm kind of, the, the, the email list is very quiet. Um, it only gets used for almost for monthly meetings, for contests, you know, announcements is. Random posts now and then. And random posts now and then. Um, always kind of has been that way. Um, and I was just wondering if, if it's a worthwhile idea to publish um, like the, the happenings from RBNV or whatever other happenings might have happened. If, I, if, you, if you ever did make a, a, a summary from an RB and RB and whatever <laughs> meeting, <Yeah. laughs> sorry, the best place for that to go is in the, the news article when you get the, the chat stuff, okay? Uh, that's the best place for it. Uh, because then a person who's looking for it, like just do a Google search, boom, and it pops right up. You know, so, oh, I don't know, somebody talked about GitHub. You can do a GitHub search, DPRG, GitHub, and it'll pop up. But you can also link to it from the, yeah. send a link and, over and, the email. And put that, where did you say? Uh, okay, can you pull up the, go ahead and pull it up and I'll show you one way I was approaching this. So, this is the web so yeah, you pick up the web page. Oh, you're going to have to go back a ways. So, let's see. Just, uh, Doug, I, I would agree with you that it's worth doing in the way that you're talking about on the website. Yeah. But I think to Paul's question, with there's not a, there's not much activity on the email list. We know from the discussion earlier this year that there were people who favor that style mm -hmm. of communication. 
So well, I, I think always put them in both. Exactly. That's right. I think the answer to your question, Paul, for me at least. Yeah. The, the nice thing about that is then you can just search the your if you get this constant title. Uh, yeah. Uh, meeting uh, title. robot builders night virtual summary, yeah. and uh, then you could you know all your emails for that would show up. And that's a lot easier to search for some people. Yeah, right. But the genius have a constant. Yeah, I like that. I like watch to search for. Yeah. So an email plus the website is what yeah. you suggested. Well, it would be Robot Builders Night Virtual Summary. Yeah. Or Jen and Dave. And the yeah. date should be uh, 2020. It should be year, month, yeah, yeah. And date. In the order. Yeah. Yeah. So that it it will store it. Just nice consistently sort of mm -hmm. yeah. And then you just put your summary in that and then that way it's uh I, oh, great show up. Um, yeah, because I've actually I, I I haven't done that a lot, but I've done it some. Um and well, at least I find it useful because I'm not always bouncing around on websites, but I notice headers in my email in book email inbox. <laughs> Yeah. It can lead you to the website. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say, cheater's trick here: subscribe the mailing list to your WordPress site. There you go. Publish your meeting minutes and a blog entry on the WordPress site. They'll generate automatically an email to the mailing list saying this blog entry is there with a summary. Of the yeah. Automation and automation can be One post triggers both events, and to the comment, the email <laughs> here is on the site. Click the Paul Pisa needs a signature. Green, we have a uh, pizza signing detour. Just a moment. <laughs> Let's have a whole discussion about that. <laughs> pizza policies. Back to your point, you're saying you can potentially automate drive featured into it. The build pipeline for news. Pipeline <laughs> for news. Sounds good. <laughs> and that would take care of part of Paul's yeah, the yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have that. Well, there Thank you very much. All right. That's great suggestions. And thank you for the discussion, everyone. Um, some good things came out of this, yeah. and, and Quite the nice. mill, mull over it a bit. <laughs> Let's go get pizza, Sorry, and uh, we'll. I think we'll. I think we'll um, close out the the video recording now because um, I think we're going to move on to uh, after pizza. We'll work on projects, and we'll have one on one discussions. Oh, Kyle didn't. Kyle, you're at home. Yes, Kyle, sorry. Yeah, I understood. I hope Kyle didn't like just. I don't think so. I think he used the opportunity to get up and say, Okay. All right. Pizza. And so, for those people online, are they going to say online? So, or what? Guys, we're going to wind it up on the on the video portion. Of the meeting here, so thanks for joining us, and um, and uh, we'll talk to you, talk to you all later. And well, let's see them on Tuesday, or else come on one of the plots, right? So. All right. Okay. Sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs> okay.